You're listening to the Armchair GM Sports Network. Gilchrist, voice of the Kingston Frontenacs. You're listening to OHL Overtime, an in-depth interview show highlighting the players, coaches, and broadcasters from around the Ontario Hockey League who make the league so great, as well as in-person coverage of events such as the OHL Playoffs, OHL Championship Series, OHL Combine, and more, exclusively on the Armchair GM Sports Network. Here's your program host, Brendan Caputo. Back on another episode of OHL Overtime right here on the Armchair GM Sports Network. We are live here from the OHL Combine in Oshawa at the Tribute Community Center. And we're going to bring you some great coverage on today's show from the overall weekend itself. We're going to hear from some players. We're going to hear from some general managers, a special interview uh, with a special guest in the building as well. And just get a feel for what is happening here at the OHL Combine ahead of next week's OHL Draft taking place next Friday and Saturday. The final chance that these players have to showcase what they can bring to these organizations here. There were a lot of scouts from OHL teams in the building as well as some management, general managers. And we're going to hear from some of those gentlemen on today's show. So we're going to hear first off from Mike Oak, the general manager of the Peterborough Peets, coming off their OHL championship run and rebuilding that team here with the bright young roster that they have after all the moves that they made at last year's trade deadline to recoup all of their young assets as they move forward. We're also going to hear from Rob Papineau, the general manager of the Sudbury Wolves, on just the way that they've been able to kind of develop through the draft with some of their high-end talent with Quentin Musty, David Goyette, and rounding out the rest of their team and how important the draft has become for a Sudbury Wolves team that doesn't make a lot of trades, but they have certainly found themselves in a good spot in the second round of the playoffs. And lastly, we'll hear from Corey Cooper, the general manager of the Kingston Frontenacs, going over his team as they made a coaching change halfway through the year, bringing in Troy Mann and how he's kind of developing that group there. Some bright young talent on that roster as well, and they're going to have another top 10 pick to add to their arsenal. So we're going to hear from uh, Corey Cooper about the plan moving forward for the Kingston Frontenacs and their young roster. As far as the players go, we're going to hear from Ulysses Lombardi from the North York Rangers. We're going to hear from Cole Zerkowski from the Mississauga Rebels. Parker Vaughn from the Elgin Middlesex Canucks. Nicholas Frasca from the Toronto Marlboros, one of the many Frasca brothers drafted into the Ontario Hockey League, so he'll be uh, the next one to join that list. And as well, Brady Waslin, one of the highly touted players here at the OHL Combine from the Markham Majors. Those are the players we're going to hear from today. And we're also going to hear from uh, people may know him very well for his time on television on Sportsnet now with the NHL Network and former NHL player Anthony Stewart going over uh, his OHL career here with us on the show as he was in attendance this weekend and talking about some of the great things he's doing with hockey diversity as well. So that's what's going to happen on today's OHL Combine show right here on OHL Overtime on the Armchair GM Sports Network, proudly brought to you by Wild Bills Auto Repair, helping customers stay safe and confident on the road since 2012. We're going to get you to all of those interviews right now. We've even got some visual to go over top of some of the player interviews as well. So hopefully you guys really enjoy this special edition of our OHL Combine 2024 weekend recap. Back with the Vice President of Operations and General Manager of the Peterborough Pete's, Mike Oak. Mike, uh, I know it's a little bit different than uh, where you were at last year. You're here at the Combine getting ready to pick high in the first round. Uh, you know, coming off that OHL championship year, you guys made the moves uh, to get younger and really, you know, stabilize uh, the draft pick cupboard. So how pleased are you to kind of restart this thing and try to hopefully uh, be a contending team in a couple of years again? Well, that's the expectation of, of what we've done is to be a team that contends for an OHL championship and, and then a Memorial Cup. One's got to come before the other. Uh, so it was a difficult decision that we had to make uh, at the deadline this year, uh, knowing uh, the type of players we were moving, uh, the success we had had to, you know, the midseason. 
uh, but we just, when we analyzed everything, uh, where we were with draft picks, where we were with prospects, we felt uh, our year uh, was more likely uh, down the road as opposed to this year, and 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 thus uh, made you know the changes to move out some of the older players uh, that were key parts of our championship season, and bring in some youth uh, and players that we feel will be able to contribute greatly to a championship run here in the in the near future. Does it make the cycle easier knowing that you've got a ring on your finger and you know what the process is now of what it looks like to have a championship winner? You re-signed your head coach, Rob Wilson, to an eight-year extension, so you've got the building blocks in place and the stability for those young players uh, to learn from the the next great uh, Peterborough Pizza teams to come here. Well, having a championship, you know, now last year and and knowing what the blueprint looked like, um, you know, we know that it just doesn't happen overnight. And, and we saw the different characteristics uh, of a championship team, uh, some of the things that, you know, need to take place both on and off the ice. And, and so we decided that, uh, you know, once we were going to be in a position to, to move off some of the older players uh, that were, you know, great players and that each of them are in a new situation and, and each of them were brought in to help their new teams experience what we did last year. Uh, we, we felt we had a chance to acquire some younger players that would bring some of those attributes uh, in, in the years to come. And, and we acquired players uh, of the 07 birth year, all of them a little bit different and not all the same. They all have different characteristics, but they all have characteristics that we feel you need to have in order to compete for an OHL championship. And when you have that young roster and you talk about some of those uh, first rounders that you guys were able to acquire and also pick yourselves you're going to add another one here at the OHL draft just how important is it to build through the draft in the Ontario Hockey League I know you can go out and make certain trades but it really is about that development and making sure that you guys pick the right players to come in here and develop it the right way so uh, how important how much stock do you and your staff put into the whole draft process and and whole draft week as it approaches for next week well the draft is huge uh, for for a team to be able to put themselves in a position to compete for a championship. You have to make trades, there's no doubt about that, and you're gonna add some players and plug some holes. But the foundation comes through the draft. And when I look back at our championship run last year, not only does it come through the draft in the form of your your higher end picks or your high picks, uh, guys like J.R. Avon or Tucker Robertson who are both early picks, uh, it also comes from picks in the you know, 12, 13, 14th rounds, 15th rounds. Guys last year that were selected late in the draft, like Connor Smith, who played a key role, a ninth round pick. Uh, Jax Dubois and, and Chase Lafay, both, you know, 14th uh, round picks. I mean, so the draft is crucial and it gives you uh, the depth that you need in order to compete. And so heading into this year's draft, yes, we are going to get a couple of real good players uh, early in the draft that are expected to you know play big parts on our hockey club down the road but we're also going to select players throughout the draft that eventually we're going to need to to move their game forward and, and be able to contribute at the OHL level and contribute towards a championship run. And talking about that organizational depth just what do events like the combine the OHL cup as you guys are finalizing those lists how important is a weekend like this to maybe dot the I's, cross the T's as far as uh, just finalizing your list, maybe get a, an extra couple look at a few guys and not putting too much stock into it, but making sure that uh, you do uh, look at it with some importance. Yeah, you know what, the o two great events to finish off the year, really. The uh, OHL Cup it gets a chance to see the best against the best, and then it whittles down to, you know, the final two, two teams in a championship game. and. And really, it was uh, a great event again this year and a great championship game uh, where we saw Oakville uh, defeat Vaughn 1-0. And then a, an event like this, it allows us to see uh, some additional players that maybe weren't at the OHL Cup, see them in, in un unfamiliar surroundings, playing with and against players that they don't normally play with, uh, see how they react, see what they bring. Uh, so it gives you a chance to, to see some of that dynamic too, which can be... Uh, crucial and vital during our final deliberation. So uh, another great opportunity for our scouts and, and I know that we'll have some additional meetings here in the coming week uh, leading up to Friday when the draft will start and uh, we'll have a list prepared and I'm confident that we're going to be in a position to make some really good selections 
uh, to help us down the road. Peterborough Peach General Manager Mike Oak. Mike, thanks so much for taking the time once again and uh, look forward to where Peterborough is going to go in the next uh, coming years with this exciting young roster and, and best of luck with the draft process next week. Thanks very much and again uh, thank you to you uh, for all the support you provide uh, with regards to keeping fans uh, updated and informed on all the going on in the, the OHL. It's, uh, it's great to know that there's such a a spotlight on the OHL and the young players because these guys are the, the stars of tomorrow at the NHL or are here now in the OHL. Back at the OHL Combine with Sudbury Wolves General Manager Rob Papineau. Rob, you got to be pretty pleased with where your team is right now. I know it's draft weekend, but obviously your team's moving on to the second round. Uh, just how pleased are you with kind of the development and the growth that you've seen over with the team the last two years and you know the fruits of your labor uh, really coming to fruition here? No, you know what, it's something we've been building for since COVID ended. Uh, we made a decision that year to go young, and this is that 04 group that we built around, and we've been able to add some pieces. And you know what, Mississauga has got such a great young team that, you know, they obviously did so well this year. And you know, we went into that series knowing there was going to be a battle, and they not just were young, but they were also a physical team. So they've got skill and some physicality. So they they definitely pushed us uh, really hard. And, you know, we're happy that we were able to get through that series. And when you talk about the development, the, the a week like this is really going to set your team up for the future. You were picking first overall a few years ago with Quentin Musty, and, and obviously you hit on David Goyette as well. Just, uh, you know, how important is the draft weekend and building your team through the draft to be able to, a couple of years down the road, kind of having the success like you are with Sudbury? Well, I mean, if you just look at what we've done up in Sudbury, we've kind of done it through the draft in all the last seven years, that, at least that I've been involved with the hockey team. and. It's, it's real important. We don't make a lot of trades. I mean, it's not something that we've been, you know, we believe in you draft well, you develop well, and then you might have to add a few pieces as you're going through things. But uh, the draft is a critical, critical piece for us, and that's why we spend, you know, the entire time here at the Combine. What did you see in, in David Goyette looking back on his draft year, and now he's the leading point getter in the Ontario Hockey League. It's, he's a Seattle Kraken top prospect. Uh, what, did you, what have you seen from David Goyette in his kind of transition as, you know, becoming one of the best Sudbury Wolves in the last uh, recent memory here? Well, I mean, David was a guy right when he was at the academy that was, you know, su super skilled, very fast, very competitive, uh, you know, and, and, you know, he just needed to grow a little bit from that time, and we, t we drafted him pretty high that year, and, you know, he's come in as delivered, and he's been nothing but a great Sudbury Wolf for us, and he's, you know, he's been our leader this year and our captain, and, uh, you know, he's a guy that's uh, really helped set the tone for our season this year. And when you're still going on, play, it's, it's a little bit different than maybe the NHL draft. You know, you're, you're doing the draft while the season's still going on. So really the only teams that have an advantage are the ones that are, are eliminated. So how do you kind of go about the process when you're, your team's still playing in the playoffs and trying to get your scouting staff together and making sure you have all the, all the things uh, ready to go at your disposal for the weekend? Well, you know what, we've got a great scouting staff, so you really rely on them. It's all year, right? It's not just this week. So. Our guys have been out all year. We're not like a, a huge staff, but I really believe in the guys that we have on our staff and they're out in the rinks all year. And, you know, really this is just sort of bringing it all together at the end of the year. Um, but, you know, if, if we have to be playing hockey when we're drafting, we'll take that trade. So. Absolutely. And w when you look at a weekend like this with the Combine, I know some of the top, maybe the top end players aren't here, but how important is it to maybe get uh, get a look at some guys that may, might go in the, the mid round just to kind of finalize your list and, see the players uh, going through some of the drills and the games tomorrow just to, to kind of you know reaffirm maybe some of the decisions you might have. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great experience for these guys because you're bringing young guys together from, from all different places, which is going to happen in training camp, and you can sort of see how they adapt to working with different players and different skilled players. Some of them are coming from teams where you know maybe some of the players on their team weren't as talented as the guys that are here, so you can sort of see them step up a little bit, and it gives them a real opportunity to show you something a little bit different maybe because of some of the restrictions they might have had during the season. Uh, so you know what, and, and I give the OHL a lot of credit. I mean, looking at the list of players that's here, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of really good hockey players here this weekend, and we're pretty excited to be here. And last question for you, just a, a move that kind of flew under the radar, but it seems like it's really paying off now towards the end of the season. You brought in Drake Berhowski to help out with the defensive side of things uh, to, to kind of stabilize that. He's obviously played the defense in the National Hockey League. He's been a coach for a long time. What went into that move and, and giving uh, head coach Ken McKenzie another set of eyes on the bench to really help out that defensive core going into the playoffs? Well, you know, we have, we've had a good relationship with, with Bear, uh, he was with us back in 2016, 2017 before he got the job as head coach and general manager down in Orlando. So we've always maintained a real good relationship. I actually went down to see one of his games uh, a couple years ago when he was in Orlando over the Christmas holidays with my family. Uh, you know, and it, the timing was, was good. I mean, he's a guy that's played the position. 
He's a guy that you know our players look up to and respect. He obviously was he was a Jack Ferguson Trophy winner. Um, you know, went tenth overall in the NHL. Had a, a real good career, and, and he's coached at the pro level. So, you know, the East Coast Hockey League is a really good hockey league. I mean, a lot of our guys that come through our league and do really well spend a little bit of time there on their journey, and it just brings a different perspective to our players. As you know, no matter what's going on here in junior hockey, it gives them a little bit of bit of a better picture for what's coming in the next years, few years ahead. Sudbury Wolves General Manager Rob Papano, thanks so much for joining us, and uh, best of luck to the Wolves in the second round and uh, upcoming with draft weekend as well. Thanks a lot. Back with the general manager of the Kingston Frontenacs, Corey Cooper. Corey, first off, um, I know the, the season just ended. It's fresh for you, but uh, reflecting on it, you made the coaching train change to Troy Mann. Did you like the way that the team kind of responded and the way that Troy kind of brought that pro system into your hockey club and really made you a harder team to play against? Can you just speak to maybe the second half of the year and, and what you're pleased with as you he goes into his first full training camp next season? Yeah, certainly. Um, those are difficult decisions to make um, when you're making a, a coaching change in season. Um, it's been a, you know, it was it's, it's disappointing right now, kind of with the season being over and where we finished. But Troy certainly came in and implemented um, a strong structural system, um, and it's something I think is going to be the foundation of you know the organization kind of moving forward here. So having the opportunity next season to be able to get into training camp and kind of set the table, I think will be a, a really nice opportunity for him and for for our team. And uh, talking about draft, the combine obviously here in Oshawa, and the draft coming up next weekend. Uh, what's the process like for you and your scout? as far as taking something, some things from the combine. I know you're a goalie guy, so watching some of the goaltending uh, in, in the combine, just um, do, do you take much from this sort of weekend maybe to finalize some of those lists or um, you know, what, what's, I guess, the, the process from the combine leading up uh, until draft night? Well, it's a, it's a little bit more reassurance, to be honest. Certainly for me coming down here, um, I primarily do like to watch the goalies to get a feel for them all on the ice together and, and just to see you know how they look, how they feel, how they're taking taking direction and guidance through drills. Um, so for me, that's probably the value in it uh, the most from the combine standpoint. But just being able to watch the players within their skill sessions and you know, work habits and, and creativity is part of it as well. So um, it, really, our list is pretty firmed up, but these are just, uh, again, reassurance points. And you're picking in the latter half of the top 10 there. You've been successful with the past few drafts that you've had, Tyler Hopkins, Matthew Soto, just to name a few, and then Paul Lidwinski, obviously, before you got here, uh, was, was a top-round pick as well. So what's been the development for this Kingston front next team with some of those top-end picks, but also making sure that you develop the guys in the fourth, fifth round and making sure that they're going to be the depth players that you need uh, on, on your team as you move forward and, and hopefully into deep playoff runs? Yeah, certainly you have to look at your overall organizational depth and what your what your needs are. But I think when you're picking eight, um, you're at a position where you're looking for best player available. Um, and certainly we have to see kind of how that plays out in front of us and to uh, you know to who that particular player may be. We have our, our thoughts and ideas and the type of player that we obviously value within our organization. Um, and that's going to be an important selection, number eight. Um, but the same token, we're going to have two second round picks this year uh, currently, and those are important pieces as well. So again, you have to look at your, at your overall depth where your areas of needs are and projecting out through the next few seasons and how you can you can fit these guys in to help build your roster and, and hopefully work towards a championship. And for an example, if you're picking uh, at eight is, without going into, into too much detail about it, if you're are you reaching for a position in need or is it best available? Like how do you kind of go about the process? For example, if you needed a forward, would you take a forward there if it was a positional need or if the best player was a defenseman, you just go ahead and take the defense. Where do you find that kind of balance there? Yeah, I think when you're picking in the top 10, you're certainly looking for best player available. I don't, I don't think you're, you're going to necessarily go by position. You, you may get to that as the draft wears on, but certainly when you're picking someone that high, you want to make sure you're getting the, the best possible player, and and uh, you know that's what our intentions are. And Paul Ludwinski, just speak to kind of how how he progressed this year as the captain, and and really took took on that role. And I know he missed some time as well, but being drafted by the Chicago Blackhawks, did you see a different Paul Ludwinski this year, and and leading your your young group there, and making sure that they did all the right things on and off the ice to continue to build uh, with, with what Troy Mann was asking for them in, in response. Yeah, I mean, Ludd's is certainly a, um, 
you know, leads by example as far as his on-ice play go. He, he plays so hard every shift all the time. He's willing to lay his body on the line. Um, he did that through playoffs, to be honest with you, in the, in the you know, it was only five games, but he got banged up pretty quickly because he's doing everything he possibly can um, for our team to have success. So hopefully it's good experience for all of our guys and see how difficult it is if you want to be successful. Um, and Ludz is certainly at the forefront of that, of leading the example on it. And, and that's stuff that as he moves on um, to pro hockey, our younger guys can kind of feed off. And lastly, uh, you, you talk about the series of North Bay didn't go the way you wanted, but that's a good team to, to learn from as far as going, what it's going to be like to go through a, a tough playoff battle. And, you know, your seventh seed this year, hopefully going to be higher next year. So what are you hoping that the guys take from that experience and as they move forward here w w with this young group that you do have in Kingston? Yeah, it, it's certainly that. It's just the challenges of, of the, you know, the caliber of play being raised. And uh, for whatever reason, that team's really had our number over the last couple of seasons. Um, but our guys to get that experience. And I know it was only five games, but I felt like the series was closer than that. Certainly was analytically um, from the chances and opportunities that both teams had. So it is disappointing, um, but certainly there's lots of takeaways from it and what it's going to, you know, our group has to do in order to be successful, um, you know, next season. Kingston Front Act General Manager Corey Cooper. Corey, thanks so much for doing this and best of luck uh, with the draft process. And I'm sure it's going to be exciting time for you and your staff. Certainly looking forward to it. Thank you. Wild Bill's Auto Repair is your local center for auto maintenance and repair in the Niagara region. Since 2012, Wild Bill's Auto Repair and Body Shop has been helping customers stay safe and confident on the road, knowing their vehicles in top running condition through their services. Located at 7868 Oakwood Drive in Niagara Falls, the garage started as a tribute to the owner's father, William Robert Hunter, who passed away, continuing the same community spirit and high level of service which customers came to expect from him back at Hunter's Auto Repair. Their multi-award winning auto shop has earned the trust of the Niagara community with its fair treatment of all customers who can feel confident they'll get the trustworthy advice and repairs during their visit. Their experienced crew loves meeting new people and looks forward to forming a lasting partnership for the care of your cars. To find out more or to book a service, contact them today. 905-358-7868 or wildbillsauto.ca. Wild Bills Auto Repair, helping customers stay safe and confident on the road since 2012. Pets bring immense joy to our homes, becoming an integral part of our families. But this living, loving experience often requires a little extra care and attention. That's where Global Pet Foods comes in, with owners and staff ready to support you every step of the way. Check out one of their locations today, 3643 Portage Road in Niagara Falls, 160 Highway 20 in Font Hill, or 400 Scott Street and 344 Glendale Avenue in St. Catharines. Global Pet Foods, where pets are undeniably part of the family. Proud to sponsor the Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of the Niagara Ice Dogs. Niagara Golf Lounge features two state-of-the-art indoor golf simulators, allowing you to play some of the world's best courses all year round. The perfect place to indulge all season long. Don't worry about getting thirsty while you play around with your friends. Their fully stocked bar offers a wide selection of drinks, appetizers, and a variety of meals are also available to enjoy before, during, or after you play. Grab a seat next to the fire in their comfortable sports lounge. Didn't bring your clubs? No problem. They have partnered with TaylorMade to offer you the best rental clubs. You won't want to miss their exclusive NFL and NHL giveaways for the Buffalo Sabres and Buffalo Bills. Located in the Best Western Plus Cairncroft Hotel, 6400 Lundy's Lane in Niagara Falls. Visit NiagaraGolfVacations.com to learn more and to reserve your golf bay today. The Niagara Golf Lounge, Niagara's home for golf and sport all year round. Are you currently looking for work in the Niagara region? If so, you owe it to yourself to check out the services provided by the Niagara Employment Help Center located at 6100 Thoroughstone Road in Niagara Falls. Their many free services include a fully staffed resource area open to the public, resume and cover letter writing, local labor market information, job search strategies, assistance with clarifying employment, training and career goals, employment counseling and job search support, Better Jobs Ontario information and registration assistance and you can check out their website at ehc.on.ca or call 905-358-0021 for more information. The Niagara Employment Help Centre, helping people find work since 1983. JNL Flooring is Niagara's specialty flooring and design company. They take great pride and provide elite customer service and support. With a beautiful showroom, great pricing, and a wide variety of truly unique products, JNL Flooring is your specialty flooring and decor boutique shop. 
All of their products are environmentally friendly and responsibly produced so you can feel good about your flooring choices. Their goal is to build authentic relationships based on honesty and integrity that they foster with respect and authenticity. Offering a unique and wide range of quality products presented by a knowledgeable and patient team, they simplify the process to make your life easier and to make your home more beautiful. Visit them at 4424 Montrose Road in Niagara Falls or find out more at jnlflooring.com. If you think you can get a better deal anywhere else, you don't know Jack at JNL Flooring. You're listening to the Armchair GM Sports Network, the Niagara region's best local source for North American sports podcasting coverage. By sports fans, for sports fans. Please be back at the OHL Combine by the NHL Network's Anthony Stewart. Anthony, uh, thanks so much for doing this. Uh, I know uh, maybe it brings back some memories for you, being an OHL player yourself, former Kingston Frontenac's captain. Um, does it kind of bring you back to your kind of draft process, draft week, and, and what that moment was like for you when you were selected in the first round by the Florida Panthers? Uh, yeah, it does. Um, you know, I don't think there was a combine back then when I played too. And you know, the one thing is I didn't really remember. You know, the scouts and the pressure. I just went out and played. So uh, definitely, the market has changed right now. But it's great to see. Um, you know, some of these kids that I've coached against. Uh, I coached in the GTHL for the last nine years, and this age group I'm very, very, very familiar with. So to come and see them now you know, start to achieve some of their dreams. It's great to be a part of that, but uh, even more importantly, uh, come out and watch and show my support. What is it about uh, the OHL and junior hockey that you think um, just translates uh, for the players and gets them prepared for what it's going to be like in pro hockey and the National Hockey League level? Uh, you know, what's maybe something that uh, you can see is, is helps the players as they transition uh, from teenagers and, and getting to pro hockey? Well, definitely it gets you prepared for pro hockey. You know, you're playing some nights, uh, some weekends, three and three. You're playing 60, 70 games a year plus playoffs. So it's a lot of hockey, which gets you prepared for that strenuous schedule at the next level, right? And again, you got to take it serious. And these players this age are treated like pros. They're doing on ice. They're doing off ice training nutrition coaches that they have uh, this weekend and, and doing some seminars so it really gets you prepared what the next level is going to be like you know as opposed to sometimes going NCAA where you know you're playing one game or two games maybe on a weekend and you know you're practicing and in the gym the whole time it's more uh, getting you prepared for that pro game at, at a younger age. And how much do you think that the players, you know, they, they want to perform well at something like this, but obviously the tape throughout the year means a lot. So where do you think that the fine balance is between making sure that you, you show good at the combine, but also making sure that the tape that you put on all year was, uh, was a success? Like, where, where do you think the fine balance is there? Well, I think, you know, they're the scouts here and, you know, they've, they've drafted a lot of, you know, great players over the year and they have a fine eye. So they do, you know, their evaluation, I'm assuming, over the whole entire year. And uh, But I think this combine gives, you know, an opportunity to get a little bit of a bump, right? Some guys that may have gone under the radar or some goaltenders that, you know, maybe didn't play for great teams, but they're showing some of their movements. And, you know, so again, it, it's great to come out and, and show what you do. I was a big competition guy, so I always liked, you know, seeing where I stacked and compared against my, pro, uh, my peers. So I always wanted to be the biggest, the fastest, the strongest in the combine, just uh, another opportunity to show that. Absolutely, and uh, it's moving on from your playing career, when did you kind of start to think later on a, a, as your playing career was winding down that you wanted to become a coach and then eventually become a, a broadcaster? How's that kind of transition been for you? Uh, it's definitely been great, and uh, again, you obviously don't retire on your own uh, volition, and uh, again, I retired a little bit early, but you know, helping kids, I have a charity now called Hockey Equality. We're going above and beyond to ho help the next generation of kids, but um, you know, coaching minor hockey made me fall back in love with the game, being on the ice and helping these young kids achieve their dreams and you know the, the great thing about minor hockey is these kids they they're sponges and they get better every single practice every single game so to be a part of that and see them develop and grow as young people and hockey players you know that's very very fulfilling for me so uh, the media is, is great as well you get to stay in the game talk watch hockey for a living and 
Uh, it's great, uh, especially in Toronto. You get to talk about the Leafs all the time. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's something I wouldn't change. It's a passion of mine as well, too. So I'm wearing a lot of hats in the hockey world. But uh, it's definitely uh, gotten my passion back for the game that sometimes you lose for a couple of years when you retire, uh, you know, at a younger age. And lastly, reflecting uh, as you did there, is there one moment that sticks out to you from your OHL career playing with Kingston and, and just the experience that, you know, maybe the long bus rides and the camaraderie between the guys? Like, is there something that really sticks out to you when you look back at your OHL? career well I remember my rookie year I sat right behind Larry Mavity so I remember those conversations uh, over the years the late great uh, uh, Mavity but I think my uh, my last year you know my brother made the team as a tryout and I got him on the team and just seeing him develop from a fighter to a guy in and out of the lineup to you know being a star near the end of the year uh, having a hand in that I think that's my greatest hockey accomplishment so I think the main thing though would probably be just the friendships a lot of my friends uh, to this day are uh, players I played with in Kingston or, you know, talking to Eric Stahl still and talking to guys that you sort of go on as the pros with, you keep that sort of relationship going with the World Juniors and stuff like that too. So I think that's another thing that's understated and not really thought about is those, those connections that you make um, at the junior levels that you keep for the rest of your life. Former NHL player and now broadcaster on the NHL Network, Anthony Stewart. Anthony, thanks so much for taking the time and uh, look forward uh, to seeing you the rest of the way. All right, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Back at the OHL Combine with Markham Majors forward Brady Wasslin. Brady, uh, first off, uh, how has the whole weekend been for you, the, the whole experience of it? I know you're gear, getting geared up for next weekend with when the draft comes around, but uh, how good has this been? Uh, kind of a little, uh, little pre, pre-show pre taste for you and getting to meet some, uh, some other guys here that are draft eligible as well. Uh, yeah, it's been amazing. The caliber of play has been elite. The off-ice and on-ice testing was just next to, next to amazing. And uh, the OHL puts on such a good event here every year, and I'm very grateful to be a part of it. And with Markham, you got one teammate here, Matthew Humphreys, is actually playing on your team as your goaltender. So how cool has that been to kind of go through this process with him? You have another familiar face that you've uh, kind of walked in the building with and, and getting to play with him as well uh, like you did in Markham. I mean, yeah, he's, he's an amazing kid, one of my best friends. Uh, his family's so welcoming to me. I lived at their house for most of this year. I stayed with them this weekend, so it was an amazing experience to be by his side while we went out there and did that. Absolutely, and how did you feel like your season went personally for you with Markham? Uh, you know, the, the standings-wise wasn't uh, where you guys want to be as far as the team, but uh, how do you feel like you grew in your draft OHL draft year and, and put on a good tape, uh, hopefully, for the OHL scouts to select you next weekend? Yeah, I thought I showed my, my skill, everything I had, uh, my leadership, my defensive side of the games improved so much compared to last year, and I thought that I left a lasting impression this year that will hopefully uh, inspire the next generation. Absolutely, and putting your scouting hat on for a minute, who's maybe a player that's kind of caught your eye this weekend, maybe with some of the on-ice on or off-ice testing that uh, you know, has impressed you so far? I mean, Parker Vaughn scored a couple nice goals the game before, scored one nice one against us, and he, he was flying out there in the off-ice testing. Yeah, that's, that's a good one for sure. Talk to him as well. So uh, lastly, I'm going to ask you the generic hockey question. Everybody gets it. Who is the guy you look up to as a player? Who's kind of the person you model your game after and, and kind of you know look at for trying to take that next step? I mean, there's a couple. Obviously, Sidney Crosby is one of the best players to ever do it, both sides of the puck. But uh, ever since I was little, I looked up to Patrick Kane. I had the chance to skate with him a couple of times, which was absolutely amazing, and I, I wouldn't trade that for the world. And uh, he's such a class act and an amazing hockey player, and that's just who I want to be when I grow up. How old were you when you got to skate with Patrick Kane, and how cool of a moment was that for you? I mean, it was amazing. It was just like when he was recovering from his hip surgery, so I got to see what he's all about. He's pretty good. Absolutely. Hopefully you learn a few tips from him as well. So Brady Wasslin of the uh, Markham Majors, thanks so much for doing this. Best of luck to you next weekend. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be an exciting time for you, and best of luck as you go into your OHL career. Thank you. Back with USC's Lombardi at the OHL Combine from the North York Rangers. Um, first off, uh, a lot of your teammates are here, one of the top represented teams here at the OHL Combine. Just uh, how cool has it been to kind of be with some of your teammates there and, and go through this whole weekend with them? Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I really enjoy because all year you never really get the chance to play against your teammates in a game. So uh, playing against some of, my, some of my best friends like Luca Bonomo and uh, Cohen Ashgok again, you know, seeing how it is playing against them. They're both incredible players. So, uh, yeah, it's really cool to be here with all these guys, and uh, it's been a fun weekend. How has it been kind of meeting some new guys as well, going through the process? You're all kind of gearing up for the OHL draft uh, and the whole process. Just how much are you looking forward to, you know, what's to come hopefully for you next weekend and, you know, going through uh, kind of a taste of it this weekend? Yeah, so meeting new guys was awesome. Like, I think our team is in this combine is such a great group. You know, I've met some new guys that I haven't met before, like uh, someone who I'm good buddies with now is – 
um, Tandler Nettleton, and uh, he's a real good guy. Same with Colin Ellsworth, and just guys I never thought I'd get the chance to play with. It's really cool seeing them, playing with them, seeing the type of people they are, and yeah, it's really cool. Who's maybe a player that stuck out to you from your scouting report, being on the ice with them, on ice, off ice testing this weekend? Uh, who's somebody that's really caught your eye? Uh, Alexander Balecki. Played with him when I was a little bit younger. Uh, just watch him develop. Like, I haven't seen him in a while. You know, he's looked so good in the test, and he was doing so well. And, uh, yeah, he's definitely a guy that I think is a very talented, special player. What, uh, how did you feel like your season went with North York this year? Um, how did you feel like you guys did? And for yourself personally, how do you think you kind of, you know, took a step in your development in your OHL draft year to uh, hopefully put a good tape out there for the OHL scouts to, uh, you know, select you next weekend? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I had a really good start to the year. So did our whole team. And, you know, we had lots of guys putting up lots of points. Our team was just doing so well. It was so fun. And then about halfway through in December, I broke my ankle. So uh, that was a real big challenge, but just getting to go to the rink and still seeing the guys at the, you know, at practice, even when I was in my cast at games, was still so fun getting to see them and support them. You know, didn't miss many games. And then when I came back, you know, stuff was challenging. You know, getting confidence back after injury, ankle was still sore, but just getting to play again with my favorite people on this planet, it was so awesome. And uh, we did well in the playoffs. Went to Game Five in the finals. You know, did well in OHL Cup. So I think even though we didn't win a lot a lot this year I think just the memories that we made all all this winning was awesome I know you want to be on the ice but uh, going through something like that with that injury did you kind of get to see the game from a different perspective you know kind of an overhead view of everything going on did did you were able to kind of take anything or learn from the experience of uh, you know having to sit out for a little while yeah well like you just get so much more of a hunger for you know in the off season you're still playing spring tournaments and uh, spring hockey summer hockey whatever it may be but just being out, not being able to play, practice, even go stick handle really, can stand up. You just got such a hunger for it. And uh, just watching the game from the stands, you realize how much more time and space there is. Like, I don't know, on the ice it feels very tight and uh, game feels really, really fast. But up here you're kind of watching, you're like, wow, well, it's like, it's still, don't get me wrong, very fast. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, you just kind of notice those little extra plays you get to make that maybe in a game you didn't think you had that time and space. And uh, you really actually see who the skill players are. like. I was watching a game versus the Marlies, and I just really noticed a lot of guys, like, you're playing on the ice with them, and you're like, yeah, like, you obviously know they're skilled, and you get to see what they're doing when you're watching from above. You really appreciate it. And lastly, uh, the generic hockey question, I'm going to ask you it, like I ask everybody else, what's the player you kind of want to be like, who's somebody you mold your game after, and somebody at the NHL level that uh, you kind of looked up to uh, growing up? Yeah, so even though I'm a centerman, and uh, this guy is sort of a winger. I still try and model my game after a player like Evgeny Malkin. And, um, sorry, Evgeny Malkin. And just, you know, a big power forward with a high IQ. I think my IQ is probably the best attribute of my game. I think I think the game very well, and I think so does he. So just molding my game after that big power forward with lots of skill. And, uh, yeah, I know I try and be as two-way as I can. I feel I'm a very good two-way player and just... I think my skills, I'm very good at noticing what I'm good at, what I need to improve on. So, uh, yeah, I really take advantage of what I'm good at. USC's uh, Lombardi uh, from the North York Rangers, thanks so much, and uh, best of luck to you and your family next weekend. I'm sure it's going to be you know, a big moment for you guys and uh, you know, all the hard work you've put in over the years. So uh, best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Take care. Back to the OHL Combine with Mississauga Rebels forward Cole Zorowski. Cole, uh, first off, just uh, how would you assess the, the season for you guys with Mississauga? You guys made the OHL Cup, uh, pretty successful season. So um, I know it didn't end the way you wanted it to, winning it, but uh, uh, are you pretty pleased with the way the season ended and you know finishing off that part of your hockey career? Yeah, one hundred percent. You know, I, I think the boys. You know, we played we played great throughout the year. It was it was a it was a blast. Um, you know, obviously not the finish we wanted, but at the end of the day, we all came together as a group, and it was a great year. What was it about that team? You got four guys here at the Combine. Seems like uh, that, that team had a lot of eyes on it. So uh, what was it about uh, that group of guys that uh, made it so special, made it the team that uh, went pretty far this year? Yeah, you know, I think we all got along this year. It was uh, uh, We had a lot of chemistry. You know, I think the, the four or five guys that made it to the Combine, we could have had more guys. You know, everybody worked hard this year, and everyone pitched in. So I think it was a very, very good year for us. How would you assess uh, the way the weekend's gone for you, just kind of soaking it all in? you got some teammates here with you, so that uh, makes it a little bit easier. But meeting some new guys, some new teammates, uh, as you guys are all kind of going through this process together and knowing what's to come uh, next week, just uh, you know, overall thoughts on, on the weekend. Yeah, no, this weekend's been great. You know, It's been a great experience. Probably my first time ever 
doing a, a combine, you know, meeting all these guys is it's great. It's, you know, top notch. Uh, even on the ice, it's uh, very competitive. You know, off ice, the jumping, the the pull ups. It was very very competitive too because you're trying to compete with other guys. You know, do more do more reps, do more or do a higher jump. You know, so I think it's been a it's been a great weekend so far. From your vantage point, who's a player that maybe has caught your eye so far with the on or off ice testing or or the game so far this morning? Uh, who's somebody that uh, you know has uh, impressed you so far? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to my team. You know, I think uh, Gavin Betts is my he's my he's my goaltender. You know, um, he had a rough start of the year. He got hurt, but he's had a great comeback. You know, did 12 pull ups. He's been great at the testing, and he's he's been he's been great stopping pucks. You know, I think he's a he's a great goalie, and he's caught my eye this weekend. And the generic hockey question, I know you've probably heard it a thousand times, but uh, your play style, who did you look up to? And, uh, you know, what, who are you trying to model your game after as you make that transition to an OHL player? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, I think a big part of my game is uh, I watch Ma uh, Matthew Kachuk. You know, he's a very, very physical guy, smart. He's a captain. Uh, yeah, so I like to have that edge to my game as, as well as skill. And, you know, I think I can shoot the puck pretty well. Matthew Kachuk, that's an interesting answer. So you must like the 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 200 foot game, and and you do you like to uh, kind of mix it up a little bit as well. Yeah, 100. percent You know, I think I think being a 200 foot player is a very big part of the game. You know, playing defense, you know, block blocking shots, being physical. So he's a very uh, very big guy that I that I look up to. Cole Zorowski from the Mississauga Rebels. Uh, thanks so much for doing this, and best of luck with the uh, the OHL draft this weekend. I'm sure next weekend's going to be a cool time for you and your family. Yeah, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Back at the OHL Combine with Elgin Middlesex Canucks forward, Parker Vaughn. Parker, uh, first off, congratulations on the hat trick and the uh, the first game today for you. How did it feel uh, finally getting in some game action? I know you, it's been a, a long weekend of the on and off ice training, but uh, how's it been to feel, or how has it been to get into the game shape? Uh, you know, it was nice. Uh, a lot of waiting around yesterday, but it was good experience. Got to do all the testing, and then uh, finally got to play some games with some new guys that I haven't played with before. And... Uh, they just made me look good, and it was fun to play with them. Yeah, for sure. And you got a couple teammates here from from Elgin Middlesex. Uh, how cool has it been uh, going against them, and, and having a couple guys here to uh, go through the experience with you? Yeah, no, it's been great. Uh, Mateo and Shane, uh, we've been hanging out with them all weekend. It's uh, been an awesome experience to experience it all three of us together from the same team, and just enjoy the time here. How was uh, like? How did you feel like your season went uh, in Elgin Middlesex? Like, were you happy with the way things went? And and uh, as you kind of finished off that portion of your hockey career, uh, looking forward to the to the OHL portion, uh, how would you assess kind of uh, this last season for you? Uh, yeah, I thought we had a great year. Um, a, little, a few ups and downs over the season, but I think we ended um, on a good note. We didn't get the championship that we wanted, but I think overall we had a great season as a team. And looking at this this weekend as a whole, just how, how fun has the experience been being around a bunch of new guys? Some like you have some familiar faces, but just getting to know some people around the OHL and and coaches and things like that. Just how has the whole experience of the weekend been? Um, and uh, looking ahead towards uh, next week's draft. Uh, you know, it's been great uh, getting exposed to the junior lifestyle and seeing what everything's like uh, a little bit of, and meeting everybody new. Um, just having a good time with all meeting people. It's been great, and hopefully it puts me in the right direction for next Friday. From your, from your perspective, who's a player that uh, you've see, that's impressed you so far on the ice, maybe somebody that uh, with the off-ice testing or on-ice testing or, or the game today, who's somebody that, uh, you know, from, from your vantage point has uh, been impressive? Um, definitely uh, Carter Hicks on defense. I thought he moved the puck really well, moved his feet really well in the game. Uh, he had some good showing in the testing yesterday too, but overall he's just uh, – Made me made uh, made himself look good. And lastly, uh, what's the the generic hockey question? What what's what's the type of player you like to be, and who's a player that uh, that you grew up watching? I know I'm going to feel really old when I hear your answer, but uh, you know who's maybe a player you looked up to and kind of kind of mold your game after. Um, I like to model my game after a lot of players, um, but I've always grown up watching Sidney Crosby because he's just been my favorite since I was a little kid, and uh, I try to play like him as much as I can with the way he protects the puck, the way he leads his team, and the way he's able to get it done, so probably him. Parker Vaughn, thanks so much for doing this, and uh, best of luck at next week's draft. I'm sure it's going to be an exciting time for you and your family. Thank you. Back at the OHL Combine, 
with Toronto Marlboros defenseman Nick Frasca. Nick, uh, first off, you got to be here with four of your other Toronto Marlboros teammates. Five of you are here at the Combine. Uh, you know, what, what was it about your team this year that uh, is obviously turning some heads uh, from OHL scouts? And hopefully you guys are going to have a lot of people drafted in the, in the 2024 uh, selection here. Uh, I felt like my, me and my teammates were a lot of skilled, like a lot of good hard workers who can like move the puck, work together good and like show so I'm not surprised that a lot of us are here I'm not surprised that a lot of us would be called on next Friday and uh, yeah it's all how, how cool has it been to kind of go through the process with them have some familiar faces to kind of you know go through into a weekend where you're meeting so many new guys which is cool at the same time but to have a couple familiar faces and guys you've been with all year to kind of go through the process with you yeah I've played with some for like four years now and it's like always fun to just see them around like they know you like everything about you I know them like you just know them you get that bond with them I will probably have for the rest of our lives together just the memories to like keep us together yeah who's maybe one guy not one of your teammates that's kind of caught your eye from putting the scouting perspective on going through the on and off ice testing and and playing in the games who's somebody that's uh maybe you know uh, turned your head a little bit okay i'll say uh ryan chamberlain he's really fast so like uh, like guy has unbelievable speed like he's really fast and uh, i think every every scout knows that he's probably the fastest guy in the whole age group what was your favorite, I guess, part of the on-ice testing yesterday? What was maybe something that you enjoyed most from the agility and the other, uh, the other kind of commitment cone things that you had to go through? And was that kind of a neat experience for you? Favorite thing was not falling. <laughs> All I have to say. That's well, well said, absolutely. So your brothers have been through this process as well. Kind of how, how much have you kind of bounced off of them, go, having known that they've gone through this process? And, you know, how, how excited are they for you to, to be the next installment of the Frasca brothers uh, to get through? Yeah, I talk with them daily, like some of them, like my brother's coming home t tonight or tomorrow, one of two. I've been talking to him all the time. Uh, my older brother, I've been texting him, so, like asking like interview questions, like what to say, what not to say, like just just like keep it around, like keep it short and sweet. I'm gonna try and make them laugh too. So yeah, that's all I have to say. Nick Frasca from the Toronto Marlboros, thanks so much for doing this and best of luck to you. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be an exciting time for the family to have another Frasca drafted into the OHL. Uh, already a, a heck of a lineage here, so best of luck to you as you go through with the process and uh, with the OHL. Thank you. Well, there you have it. There were all of the interviews that I was able to conduct here at the OHL Combine. Hopefully you guys are enjoying those in video. And if you're listening today on your favorite audio platform, make sure to give us some love, whatever one you chose to listen to us today. Hopefully you enjoyed listening to all those interviews from different perspectives here at the OHL Combine players general managers, and even Anthony Stewart as well, bringing a unique perspective for the weekend and looking ahead to the OHL draft, which takes place next weekend. If you guys are interested in tuning into our live coverage of the Niagara Ice Dogs, we'll be doing two days worth of full live coverage at the draft. That'll be available in audio. It'll be live on YouTube if you're watching us today on the YouTube version of our podcast. So it'll be a episode available on there as well. But regardless of that, that's going to wrap up another episode of OHL Overtime right here on the Armchair GM Sports Network, proudly brought to you by Wild Bulls Auto Repair, helping customers stay safe and confident on the road since 2012. My name is Brandon Caputo, and we're signing off here from the 2024 OHL Combine in Oshawa, Ontario at the Tribute Community Center, and we'll talk to you again very soon. You're listening to the Armchair GM Sports Network.